Okay, uh, I, I am in uh, a, a vehicle, uh, <laughs> Clarny Outfitters. I uh, dropped my vehicle off at their Outfitters and uh, I'm being driven uh, down to the town of Clarny, which turns 200 years old this year. That's amazing. Not much to change. No, just joking. Um, <laughs> well, I should probably not. And uh, I got Angel here. Angel's very excited to go with me. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, and uh, so the idea is I'm being uh, driven down to the town and they're gonna boat me um, across Jersey Bay up to Bay Finn, drop me off there, gonna camp there the first night. And then I'm gonna paddle uh, through uh, uh, Kolei Park and into George Lake. And it's gonna be awesome. And my shuttle driver is, uh, what was your name again? Rachel. Rachel. And Rachel is from Toronto and she lost her job because of COVID and now she's a guide in Killarney Park. I bet you didn't see that coming. It was a shocker. <laughs> Tom stopped because he's going to catch me fish. <laughs> no, you stay in the boat, dog. All right. He promised me a lake trout so I can have for supper. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> what do you got? What do you got? You got your dinner. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, we had a lake trout on, but we lost it. I swear. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> it's a great way to explore the park and tell you boat it in, get a lake trip to have for dinner. And then I head right across the park. It's fantastic. Okay, uh, I got camp set up. The wind switched. Um, black clouds are coming this way, so I got the turf up. But it's still sunny out, so I don't know. You know what? Uh, <laughs> Clarny weather changes like that. Uh, and listen to the weather on, on the way up, waste of time. It's always different up here. All right, my dilemma, my first night. So uh, Tom, I think it was Tom, my captain. Uh, he took me to this point, um, just out of Bay, Bay Finn. I'm just on the verge or the edge of the park. Uh, then tomorrow I'll, I'll head into the park. Uh, and it's just a bush site, it's fine. Um, dead deer carcass over there. <laughs> it's pretty old though, really old. So we're fine. Uh, the, dog, the dog found it. But I, I went to travel lightweight because I'm here just with the dog. And uh, um, so I brought a really small cook set. Brand new, I haven't used this actually. Christine gave me this for Christmas. Um, but I gotta cook the fish <laughs> that Tom caught. I mean, it was a good leg trip, so I only took a bit of it. Uh, he took the rest of it. 
And uh, I actually told him to go in town and give it to Mike Ranta. Um, I don't know if you know him. He's the guy that, that has probably crossed Canada like three or four times. And uh, I, I always joke with him at shows. I don't really know him, but it's fun to joke around with him. And he said, yeah, can you go give this guy uh, a fish in town and saying that, you know, uh, Kevin Callen had to catch it for him? <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Anyway, um, I can't really fry it in a little pan like this. I could if I use some of my bacon. There's a fire van outside of the park, which I am, and the fire van's not in the park. It's pretty dry, so I wouldn't want to light a fire in here anyway, to be quite honest. So, uh, huh. I'm gonna try to see if I can bake it. I have some tin, I do, I have some tin foil here. In my kit. Huh. Let me see if I can bake it on this, uh, almost like a, um, I don't know, we'll see. It's gonna be good. I can just boil it up if, if, if I wanted, but no, that's just wrong. That's a beautiful lake trip, so I'm not doing that. I'll think of something. Okay, so what I've done, I've never done this before in my life, and I'm not uh, telling anybody that you should do it, but I'm experimenting. Um, so I, I put a little bit of my, my bacon, uh, pre-cooked bacon from uh, Bruce Nord Deli, they make it up for me special, and um, put that on top, and I'm gonna put it in the tin foil. And then I'm going to put it in this frying pan, but then put the frying pan uh, on top of this pot, which has got about a quarter thing of water in it. So it'll basically heat it up on top with the tin foil on top, and with the bacon in it, it won't stick to the tin foil a bit. I don't know. Why I'm not just frying this. I wish, I, did, I don't have cooking oil. That's, that's the problem. I don't have cooking oil. Um, this should work though. I mean, it's going to cook it. It'd be nice if I just had some batter and oil, but I don't. Oh well. It's just survival out here. It's terrible. <laughs> Fresh fish. Who knew? I got all this dehydrated stuff and lightweight stuff, and who knew the captain of the, the boat that took me here is going to catch a lake trip for me? Who knew? <laughs> Well, okay, night one in Killarney Park, and uh, yeah, there's a purpose for this trip. Uh, it's really cool, to be quite honest. Um, my first book, I was 27 years old, and uh, quit my job, moved up here, and uh, it was funny, I had some nonprofit group um, that was gonna give me some money to work on the project, and I moved up here, and actually the park, um, what was his name? The Sumer 10 at the time great guy he uh he took me in and, and let me stay at, at their at the barracks at the park while i was working on it on, on the, the history of the park and stuff like that and um yeah I, me I remember uh being in the room one day and one of the people from that nonprofit group came in and said yeah some young guy some young kid is uh is coming here to write a book and we're going to help him out but really like I, I can't see a kid that of that age being able to write a book he had a good point um, at the time, but I turned around and said, that's me. <laughs> and I said, I don't want your money. I'll do this on my own. And I did. I lived up here for a year. I was like 25 and 27. 
I came out with my very first book. And John Dennison at Boston Mills, like he had so much faith in me, he loved the guy because really like I was just a kid. I wrote yeah, a bunch of nature columns with a ferret, whatever. But yeah, my first book. And um, man, that was 30 years ago. So the town of Killarney is 200 years old this year. And I forgot all about that because the whole COVID thing. And I was like, no, you know what? I gotta go back. I gotta do a trip. I gotta celebrate the town of Killarney visit the people that are still alive uh, that helped me out during the time and uh, remember the people that, that aren't <laughs> around anymore and still thank them for all the help. I mean, they all took me in uh, and helped me write that uh, that book. And uh, yeah, I palled around and can be coming back ever since. I'm addicted to this place. It's beautiful. So uh, yeah, so uh, all of a sudden I say, hey, uh, Ted um, from Clarion Outfitters. Hey, gosh, I knew him when he owned Sportsman's uh, Inn and now he owns Clarion Outfitters and his dad owned the, the lodge. And so, yeah, I said, hey, um, can you get me into the park? And he m made it all happen. So uh, they boated me in today and I'm heading through the central of the park just to, you know, think back and celebrate the whole idea of, of what this place means to me how special it is and the landscape is stunning and tonight i just was reminded of how stunning this place is it's just beautiful but also the people in the history of it so yeah that's why i'm here i <laughs> i'm not in the park yet uh I, i'm on crown land and a bush site just before the park uh they dropped me off but and yeah this is a bush site but that's fine by me it's good no problem uh, looking forward to tomorrow's paddle. Yeah, 27 years old, 57 now, 18 books later. Uh, wow, what a journey. It's nice to be back. I always love coming back to Clarny. into Artist Lake from the pool. Beautiful little cascade.
those wolves howling most of the night. Really in a far distance though. I don't think my mic could have picked it up. So didn't bother. And uh, there weren't coyotes. Coyotes are here too, but um, there were wolves. I don't know if they're red wolves or timber wolves, but they weren't they weren't yapping a lot. It's most more like a drawn out howl. And they had pups with them. You can hear the pups yapping away too. It's kind of cool. What was really neat is that years and years ago I went through this area through the night, uh, I got windbound, so I had to go, go through uh, Bay Finn. I was actually, no, I was on McGregor Bay, I think, at the time. And um, yeah, I looked up on the ridge. It was a clear moon lit night, and um, there's a, a wolf, and it gave out a howl. I gotta say, at first, I was like, oh! <laughs> but no, uh, it was kind of a neat experience. So it was neat to hear the wolves again last night. <laughs> yeah, I know, this trip is a trip back in time and uh, I'm always thinking back but I always try not to think back I always try to think forward but sometimes it's nice to remember all the good times and all the places I've been all the places I've paddled and Angel's really enjoying the trip she loves it out here Uh, yeah, so I went from Bay Finn, um, the pool, uh, went into OSA Lake, and then now I'm camping at Clarin Lake right now tonight. And I actually got here like 2.30ish, so I don't, I don't carry a, a watch. I don't trip with a watch, but I'm pretty sure I left camp pretty early this morning. I made good time. Um, there are some steep portages, by the way. Uh, I forgot about those. And also, I forgot that I'm getting old. Um, yeah, my back went out on the second portage. And uh, that's not good for me. Uh, my back goes out now and then. I went out last year in the springtime for a month and I couldn't go do anything. I was feeling like mm, not too good before I left, but hey, I can do it, I can do it. And um, that was stupid because uh, I'm on my own, right? So uh, I do have medication to, uh, to reduce the, the swelling and the pain. So I got that, my doctor gave me all that, whatever, in case it happens again. So I'm doing all that. Uh, drinking some tea so I'll be able to get out tomorrow uh, it's very frustrating because I've got two more trips after this uh, I got an eight day in uh, Tomogamy and then I got a six day in Philip Edward Island or the French River I'm not sure I might have changed all that and just paddle instead of portage I don't know, I don't know. anyway that's not why I wanted to chit chat chat um, Two things, uh, the history stuff. So the town of Killarney, 200 years, um, really cool story. So when I was here, uh, work on that book, right here, oh, right here. When I was working on that book um, 30 years ago, um, I was interviewing a bunch of people in town and I was getting, you know, t the typical normal history you can get at the library. And I remember I was uh, paddling uh, along Killarney, um, it was probably late October, early November, and it was a snowstorm. And uh, I got, I got windbound. I got flipped over on the shore, and this uh, man and wife came to to my aid. They were working on a dock, um, so I helped them work on the dock. In fact, his wife gave me some of her clothes, and actually a little bit of brandy. Or no, it wasn't brandy. What was it? Um, anyway. And uh, so I helped him with the dock, and after a couple of hours of work on the dock, the guy finally said, he goes, who are you? <laughs> and I went, well, I'm this guy working on this book in Killarney. Oh, you're the pen and paper guy. You're, uh, yeah, how come you haven't interviewed me? I went, well, who are you? And it was Teddy de la Day. He was the owner of a Rouche Rouge campground, and that's where I was, and it, that was his wife. Um, she's still alive. Um, he passed away in, uh, a few years back. And uh, amazing people. And I went, well, why should I interview you? Um, and he goes, what well, was my great-great-grandfather, or is it great-great-great? No, I think it was great-great-grandfather that founded Killarney. I went, what? I've been here for how long and nobody's told me that. Well, well he didn't really seem to care. So, but his wife came out with a shoebox of 
deeds and photos and all, all the stuff about the the whole history of, of the founding of Killarney. And I think, thinking back, I think really why nobody really listened to his story, uh, writers that came into town and stuff like that, is that the founding of Clarney was not really at all exciting. Other stories seemed exciting, but the truth of it is, his his father was was it Stephen Le Delamonde? Oh, I care. No, oh, shoot. Etchan no Etchan de Delamonde. Um, he was a trader, and he decided to put his trade place a little bit further in um, where Clarney is now uh, because the First Nations people would be closer to him. That's all. And I, I'm pronouncing it wrong, but it wasn't called Klein at the time. It was Shumbanoning. Um Sorry, I'm pronouncing that wrong. But, um, and they eventually changed it to Klein, uh, later on. That's the story. And I wouldn't, I maybe would have found that out later on. But if I didn't flip and dump in a, in a snowstorm along the shoreline and help that guy build a dock and his wife dress me in his clothing. And um, uh, Sherry. That's, yeah, it was Sherry she gave me. And uh, I probably would never have known that for quite some time. So when you're doing research, it's in interesting talking to locals. It takes a lot of time to get the real truth, to be quite honest. There's a lot of people that just spin a tail. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was really great to, uh, to interview them. The park itself. So the history of the park. Um, so OSA Lake. So I I piled through OSA Lake today. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. It's kind of a toss between what's what's nicer, OSA or or uh, Clarion Lake. Clarion Lake, I, I really like, but it, get, it can get busy. And uh, uh, well, so is OSA Lake. But OSA Lake, man, there's a lot of islands that got burned there the, the last few years, and old old um, burns too. But lately, I just I don't know who did it, but someone let their fire go on the one island where the old cabin is and. They caught it in time, but holy crap, man. Um, I'm not having a fire tonight. Actually, there's a there's no fire ban in the park right now, but I'm not having a fire. I don't need one. Um, okay, so the history of Killarney Park. So, group of seven. Uh, they knew the area really well, uh, and A.Y. Jackson um, really loved this area. So, in 1932, I believe, I hope I'm right with that one, he came up to... Um, go and, and paint on what's called Trout Lake at the time, uh, which actually was always a lake now. And um, actually, uh, it's interesting on the way in because I did all those little mini portages up the creek to get in, but th at that time there was only one way to get in. It was a, almost a five uh, kilometer portage straight through. But anyway, he was going through and he, he came in, and uh, during that time, he met some guy from the Spanish lumber company um, that he actually knew he was a he was a logger and the logger sourdough was his name I'm not sure uh, he just said hey by the way do you know we're gonna log this place soon he goes what what <laughs> so we got all his buddies together um, through the um, Ontario Society of Artists and he said hey we can't have this happen this is a gorgeous area so they actually did the government did do a switch they said okay we will actually log somewhere else and we'll protect uh, Trout Lake, which became OSA Lake, which is Ontario Society of Artists. There you go. The park really didn't happen until, was it 1962? Nin yeah. Uh, they protected that lake, but they didn't expand the park until later on and had a management plan for uh, until, um, uh, you know, after that. And then they expanded. Uh, the park in the north and through Panage Lake and all that that area um, uh, Wasn't that long ago. I remember my buddy Annie and I volunteered to mark all those portages or find all the portages So I'm going off in great tangent. Angel is exhausted uh, She has such a good time today running on the portage uh, uh, Yeah, the whole thing about having a dog too like I had the leash I had the dog whistle and um I had a little bell on her, uh, but I didn't meet anybody. So she was able to run the portages and she was fine. Okay, I'm going off in tangent. That's it, that's all I got. I gotta have a lot of tea. Uh, I drank a lot of water today, but yeah, I gotta have tea. Just to, whew, I'm hurting. But I love it here, it's amazing. Oh yeah, one more thing. 
I, yeah, I know I'm going off in tangent, but this is important. So I, I, <laughs> I brought this book with me, um, uh, not really for sort of like, wow, this is really cool. I have my book that, yeah. It's, it's this particular book, the story, oh my Lord. Okay, so the, the book came out uh, and it was published, um, you know, 30 years ago. Did a speaking tour or whatever. And I remember meeting them. There were two nurses and I signed their book. Um, <laughs> I signed their book. And what, oh my Lord, this is an unbelievable story. Uh, so basically they went into Clarny and the one nurse, did she break her wrist or leg? I'm, I think it was her leg. So her her friend, the other nurse, um, used this to hold the brake together. They went out to uh, uh, the pool, um, got a boat to take them to Willisville or Whitefish. I'm not sure. I think it was Willisville. And there was a doctor there and he fixed the leg. The doctor, this is how long ago this was. The doctor wrote me a letter, a letter. I, there was nothing like Google or email back then. And said, yeah, this is what happened. Um, do you want your, your book back? <laughs> um, yeah, so this is actually the copy that was used to hold her broken leg or arm or whatever, I can't remember. I think it was her leg uh, together. So I thought it would be really cool to bring this out with me. That's hilarious. You can't make that stuff up, man. <laughs> what a crazy life, wow. Okay, don't judge me, but <laughs> tonight is not the meal I was supposed to have. I was supposed to make a nice curry, but yeah, I'm... Uh oh, this is dog. Oh, oh, you're right there! <laughs> Dog's right behind me. <laughs> um, I'm making this. And, uh, yeah, it's not too exciting. Well, I don't know, it might taste really good. But I, I'm going to spice it up with, I have leftover fresh tomato. And uh, some pepperoni sticks to put in there. I'm just going to get some, some protein, nutrients in there. And then take it easy tonight. And, uh, yeah, my back's killing me. Darn, I hate saying that. It's like a, an old man. I love it. Oh, oh. Actually, I've had a bad back since my 40s. And I'm going to be 57 soon, so, yeah, it's nothing new. Just very aggravating. It's good. <laughs> I don't know, it's because it's a long day and it's easy to make. It's good. It's really good. Ah, hot though. Hot, hot. Oh. Well, I'm off. A little later than I thought. Actually, well, it's pretty early, but still. But. It's getting hot already. Wow. Uh, probably no fancy stuff on the way out with the camera. So my back is really bad. And uh, I'm just worried about getting out. I think the paddling would be fine. It's just the portaging. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've got some bad luck. Oh, I really wanted to enjoy this trip. Oh, I did, but I'm not now. It was a bad night last night. I'm glad I brought those meds the doctor gave me from when my back went out before. If you have a bad back, you know what I'm going through right now. Ooh, okay. 
Look at the scenery though, look at this. That's amazing. I gotta come back real soon. Real soon. There you go, I survived. Your hat is back. Thank you. <laughs> that was an awesome trip. Fantastic idea. Right on. <laughs>